Hello, 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 everyone. Good morning from my side. I hope all of you are doing great. Well, welcome to this exciting day two of the Triple A Game Changer webinar for the March 2024 attempt. Well, first of all, uh, can I have some confirmation, some hey from your side? Just to let me know, I am up. Absolutely crystal clear, specifically with respect to quality. So thank you very much. Great. Okay. So all clear. That's great. Okay. So today is 18th February 2024. So you have got including 18. You have got 12 days of February, followed by another six days of March, because you have got exam on Thursday, 7th March, 2024. So 18 days, 18 days, if someone stands at 25 to 30 mark right now, he or she with 100% honesty and dedication, I won't say that you can push it up to 75. And I have to be honest, but you can pass the paper with a comfort zone, with a cushion, with a room. You can easily make it, you know, somewhere around 64, 62, 58. You can do it if you are going to attempt the full paper. Yes. It's a very important and, and, and a very crucial decisive factor. Are you going to attempt the complete paper or are you going to attempt 70, 80 mark paper? There is a guy to whom I call my brother from another mother, another mother. Okay, without <laughs> mentioning his name. Uh, he failed triple A approximately six times. Well, long ago, I was not involved in teaching triple A at that point of time. Long ago. And whenever he used to came out of the examination hall, he, well, I was qualified, he was not qualified. He used to call me and he used to tell me one thing that uh, paper, well, before he used to tell me anything, I used to ask him, so how much you attempted? Okay. So I used to ask him, how, how much you attempted, you know, how much marks you attempted the paper for how many marks? And he used to say, I did fantastic. The paper was flawless. I did a great job. I, I used to ask him, no, 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 just tell me how much exactly you attempted. At that point of time, A professional marks used to be just four rather than 20. And there was no computer-based exam at that point of time. Even I qualified my ACCA back in 2012, yeah, ages ago. So uh, he used to say, well, forget about how much marks I attempted or forget how much marks I was not able to attempt. Just listen to me. The paper went flawless. I did, you know, brilliant paper. I used to say, no, no, no. Just tell me how much you attempted exactly. And he used to say 72, 74. I am dead sure he never said 80 or 80 plus. He never said it. So I used to get demoralized when I used to listen to this that 70, 72, 74, 72. And he used to fail the paper somewhere in between 46 and 50, 47, 48, 46, 48. By attempting 70, 74 mark paper. Then after six attempts, he realized a couple of things. Number one, he realized why I am not able to attempt the full paper. A, because I am not well prepared for a topic called ethical and professional issues, the syllabus area B, maybe chunks of quality management as well, because quality management and ethics, they go 
parallel to each other because it's a very typical situation if you guys are going to make compromise on the acca's code of ethics and conduct naturally consequently or i would say one of the most important implication that would be seen that you will have a compromise on the quality management as well so quality and ethics they are parallel they are exactly and equally important and they tend to be compromised simultaneously so the first thing which he realized that ethics is not a game well he had that realization long ago but he was not up to it the second thing which he realized that why he is failing the paper again and again the second thing which he realized is that the other assignments which is the syllabus area f other assignments or audit related services such as forensic audit due diligence review of prospective financial information review of interim financial information well assurance on social and environmental information and the audit of performance information in public sector those six topics are well either never prepared or never reasonably well prepared by him so finally after six attempts that brother of mine from another mother well he decided that this time around once well another mistake which he used to commit was he used to wait for the result hoping against the hope that he will make it and you can realize and you can imagine he used to fail at 47 48 so he he used to be close he was like too close yet so far that that was i think the moral of the story so whenever he used to start preparation the exam preparation once the result is out you have you have got 45 days and let's cut down to 3 4 days in morning and in in sadness and you know uh i and so basically he used to prepare for 30 35 days he always you know he used to start his preparation always from the syllabus area b followed by e if you have ever attended my orientation even if you have attended yesterday you know initial part of the class i always say even the failures are average or well prepared for the syllabus area d and e and obviously those who are great students who are very well prepared students i would say those who are honest with themselves those who are going to not only attempt the paper rather those who are going to secure the paper they have got a great command over syllabus area d and e but even if i have to fail the paper miserably at 36 38 till out of those 38 approximately 30 marks would be extracted and scored by me from syllabus area d and e so if your d is if your if your d and your e is well prepared well you are no exception because everyone has prepared d and e so in order to crack the paper and in order to be a winner on thursday 7th march you have to understand that the there is a exam question a possible exam question and it's called d e, f or it could be b c or it could be c so you got to work on your ethics you got to work on your quality management and then you got to work on other assignments well as i speak well by the way that that boy he prepared the he prepared for his triple exam by doing some reverse engineering and that time around he started his preparation from ethics then he prepared quality management then he ignored dne totally and then he prepared other assignments according to him d and e were so well prepared that almost you, you know what he used to say trust me he used to say you know this question i attempted 1.5 years ago this question which is available in exam kit now 
this question which is available on the ATC's platform, I attempted this question. And you know, this person, I, I remember I attempted this question as well. And he, he used to remember, especially the question number one, because I said he used to be relying heavily on the syllabus area D and E. So he used to remember the crux of the D and E. But the remaining 25 mark paper would always make him fumble and he used to, you know, fall short, you know, two, three marks. So what's the learning outcome? He passed the paper on his seventh attempt or maybe sixth attempt, but I'm sure more than five attempts. And finally, he qualified the ACCA because, well, by the way, he was a brilliant student because in, in one September, in one September, he attempted double A. And in June, I guess he, no. No, he attempted PM in December, then maybe F, FR, TAC, and FM in June, and then in double A in September. So basically in nine months, he passed five skill papers. So within one year, his skill was done and dusted. So he was a brilliant student. But if you are going to commit a mistake, you will regret. So I, I think last uh, yesterday's session, I started with a story called cutoff. So let's create a cut cutoff. Let's create a cutoff. You have got 18 days left. Well, out of those 18 days, if you are not working and if you are a full-time student, you know I'm talking to you. If you are a full-time student and if you have got no other responsibility, shut it down. Shut it down. Shut down your social media. Nobody is interested in your stupid stories. Nobody. At least, at least for no, nobody is interested for the next 18 days. And those stories which you are posting on your Instagram, those, you know, holy things, those beautiful quotes, you know, nobody gives a shit about it. Nobody. If you are going to pass AAA, all those stories would mean something to someone. And if you are not going to pass AAA, on Thursday, 7th March, those stories are useless. Those quotations, those memes, you know, those, those spiritual things. So you, nobody is interested. So if you want to have a break and if you want to use Instagram in the break, well, shut up. Go and go, go for a walk or something. You need, you need a break. Okay, invest few minutes and time with your mother maybe. Well, the bigger one, the real mother. I call it the bariyam, not the chotiyam. So you've got to focus on your studies. And if you are going to focus for the next 18 days, you will pass the paper in flying colors. 18 days means if you're a full-time student, you've got one 18 hours. Because if you're going to sleep for eight hours, if you've got, uh, still, if you've got another six hours for other things, you need to study 10 hours with, you know, with few breaks. Few people are coming up with comments in the chat box, but th these are direct messages. So if you know, you know. I'm telling you. So 180 hours. And if you are not a full-time student, plan. Try to get leads. This is AAA at stake. This is your ACC at stake. I don't know. I respect, you know, how much I love working class. Well, sometimes I, with, 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 a, with, a, with a bit of frustration, I say, I hate full-time students. So just imagine how much I appreciate and how much respect I have for those who are working. When I was doing my CAT, I was a full-time student. But I was teaching a tuition or two. But throughout my ACCA journey, I was not a full-time student. So I know how difficult it is. I used to travel for my job as well. So I know how difficult it is. And I can understand for, for girls, there are extra family responsibilities. You know, in my part of the world, the, the boys, if, if they are married and if they've got family commitments, they tend to get a leverage out without any reason. 
when, without any special reason. But yes, for girls, yes, I do understand there are challenges, but you need to talk. So you need to communicate. So lack of communication is the mother of major, you know, disaster. So you need to communicate. You need to tell him and you need to tell them that I've got 18 days. I need 10 hours per day. I need those 10 hours in peace, in concentration. And I'm, I'm, you don't, you, you should not be asking for straight 10 hours. No, that's not possible. That's not possible for anyone. So maybe slots of two, two hours. Okay, fine. Maybe someone out there who's listening to me, 10 hours is an unrealistic number for him or her. Maybe eight hours. But if you are not, if you are not going to invest six to eight hours per day, you will not make it. And you can make it. You have got all the potential. Why I am dead sure that you have got the potential? Because you are studying AAA right now. Because if you have got no potential, you will not be attending this session. So if you're listening to me right now, Trust me, you are an ACCA member material. So you need to be an ACCA member pretty soon. And this is your time. You've got time. You can do it now. Okay. So as I mentioned, as I was mentioning, quality management and ethics, they are a beautiful love story, better than Twilight. So you got to work on these two topics, quality management and ethics. And I will not be discussing anything uh, regarding uh, regarding the syllabus area F today. So let's start the proceedings. And well, before I move on, the usual practice, you've got two very important numbers in front of you. The first number belongs to me and I am available uh, over the WhatsApp. And the second number belongs to Wifi, and you can contact them if you are interested in the triple A revision or crash badge for any paper, including triple A. You are more than welcome, especially for triple A. You have you still have got eighteen days, so this is a great time to uh, join the batch. AFM and triple A both have got a lot of days, extra days. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, what about your exam? Well, you've got three questions and within the question number one, you might face ethics. Out of the two questions we have in the section B, well, one of the question will exclusively focus on the syllabus area, on the syllabus area E. So your syllabus area E has to be strong, but the other question within the exam might have quality management, might have ethics, and might have a combination of ethics and quality management, or it could be a combination of syllabus area F. It could be a complete question on syllabus area F. You never know with the question number three. So let's try to focus on quality management. Let's focus on the question number three. And why those 18 days are really, really, really important? Because those 18 days, have to be a multiple of your last 18 days in relation to SBR or SBL. Even AFM and ATS are nearly 50% when it comes to global pathways. But look at AAA. So yes, this requires an effort. This requires A, the realization, I think which I've just transferred and which I've just shared. B, you need to pull up your socks and you need to give your best. And yes, you can. Okay, so let's discuss thing called hello sir yes sorry please. for taking you off uh, but can you please guide uh, which uh, you know topic you think for section area f slavish area f is you know important for march 24 there are a couple of you know you you can guess because <laughs> i am having trouble with uh, slavish area f uh, other slavish areas, as you know, quite well, but slavish area F is a different one and it's, you know, teasing me a lot. Okay, yes, I do understand. One of the most challenging things in the syllabus area F is the thing itself that there are six topics. <laughs> okay, before I answer your actual question, 
how can you improve your exam preparation for the syllabus area f well let's say tomorrow you are going to prepare tomorrow you are going to prepare a topic called what factors you need to consider before accept, before accepting assignment 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so maybe half an hour on each and you need to consider seven things well how seven or why seven first of all go on to your chapter number 6 of the study text and prepare yourself what factors i need to consider before i accept company x for the sake of audit once you are done with that go on and check it out what are the acceptance considerations or what factors you need to consider before accepting due diligence assignment then another you know move to the next one what factors you need to consider before accepting an assignment such as uh, you know a painful and a complicated assignment such as forensic audit so in this way you got to prepare all the acceptance considerations and that would mean you've got a nice and juicy start to the syllabus area f okay maybe after a day or two prepare procedures which you need to apply for the review of interim financial information the procedures which you need to apply for the forensic audit the procedures you need to apply for the sake of due uh, for the due diligence the procedures you need to perform for the sake of performance information in the public sector and the story goes on uh, the very important very common the procedures you need to apply for the sake of review of prospective financial information okay maybe on the next day maybe on the next day which is not a challenging task you need to evaluate what are the reporting implications for each and every case how do we report forensic audit when we report forensic audit it's different we tend to attach supporting documentation as well how do we report due diligence well there are two possibilities is it a agreed upon assignment or is it a assurance based assignment so so the reporting implications are different depending upon what kind of assignment it was so this is one smart way which you can apply shayan why i'm saying you particularly because i believe you are already done with the preparation of the syllabus area you have already attended all the lectures now because you are still struggling this could be a great way to you know prepare yourself for the syllabus area and how many credit hours are we looking at well for the acceptance consideration the first for the sake of audit it might take 2 hours but for the uh, for the second third and fourth it will take maybe 40 45 minutes each. so 3 or uh, 4 to 5 hours day one another 4 to 5 hours day two and 2 3 hours day three how does that count shayan is this, is this looking reasonable yeah, yeah it's reasonable okay back to your original question well i don't want to guess anything to be honest because acca has got a, you know examiner has got a lot of room to play with in the morning slot it could be forensic audit in the evening slot it could be due diligence there are still countries who are allowed to have remote exams such as in, in india remote exams are allowed in pakistan remote exams are not allowed because oh well okay forget about it but forget about the because anyways so remote exams are not allowed in pakistan as a result of that in pakistan you will have two sets of exam but maybe uh, for uh, maybe in uh, other parts of the world you might have the third slot as well so it's very difficult but still if i have to you know i have if i have to get something for the march 2024 attempt i would say that because due diligence and forensic audit was part of the december attempt and examiners usually publish the paper by amalgamating september and december attempt so i expect due diligence and forensic audit not to be part of the march 2024 attempt so this is a wild guess but you never know and and okay let me add one more thing review of interim financial information the first topic it's the least important topic there is a past paper question called gannett which is available in my top 20 as well but why it's the least important topic because if you are done with double a and triple a 
if you are well prepared as a student for the audit, there is nothing to be taught when it comes to review of interim financial information. You only have to rely on analytical procedures and inquiries. That's it. So it, it's basically a smaller baby version. So there is no complication. Nothing unusual. Well, due diligence is unusual. Forensic audit is complicated. So yeah, pro review of prospective financial information is one hell of a topic because those assumptions are purely futuristic. It's not historical financial statement. It's forward looking. The client wants to justify the going concern or they want to you know, build up their case and justify a, a loan. They need to get a loan. So it's all future. It it has it has it is yet to happen. So it's a very important topic. Similarly, that sustainability, social, and environmental that could be tested. Am I clear? Can I move on? Yes, sir. You may. Okay, guys. Uh, let me quickly take you, and let's quickly. Recall what is quality management. I will be discussing quality management deeply and I will be focusing more towards the exam technique. And I'll be, this is not a comprehensive lecture on quality management. Rather, it's a lecture which is for someone who would like to, you know, uh, just focus on the exam technique and make sure, you know, he or she will be able to attempt the paper. So this is a this is a customized and um and a bespoke lecture just to quickly prepare ourselves for the quality management so that we can explore the power of paper questions. So a common requirement in the exam, a common requirement in the exam is to critically evaluate the audit work already performed. Audit work already performed on an engagement. So the work has already performed. And we need to identify, you have to identify that audit has been carried out to the required standard of quality or not. Whether the work, whether the audit has been carried out to the required standard of quality or not. So this is the theme of the question. When you will start the introduction, you will realize that audit has already been performed. And who are you? You would be either an, an, an engagement quality reviewer or you are going to be an audit manager. Well, that depends. And you will be evaluating the quality of the audit work which has already performed. Now, if the firm, if we as an audit firm, if we are not going to perform the audit work with the highest quality, with the level of quality which we promise, which we are ought to deliver, which we are supposed to deliver. Well, in that case, because of the inferior or poor quality of audit, poor quality of work, well, there is going to be an increase in the risk of issuing an inappropriate audit report leading towards audit risk leading towards potential damage to the reputation of not only the audit firm, but also to the profession as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. It will eventually lead to a situation where the stakeholders are no longer going to trust the work, the opinion, the verdict. And overall, the stock market will be, you know, shivering because how the stock market is going to react, how the existing shareholders would react, how the potential shareholders would, you know, would, would trust the company, would trust the narratives of the auditors. So this is going to be in the worst possible interest of not only for a particular firm, for the entire stock market, for the entire economy. And that is why governments and law enforcement organizations such as, you know, Securities Exchange Commission, you know, the company houses, they take so much interest in ensuring quality management 
with respect to audit firms because if an audit firm is going to make a compromise on quality well the repercussion the negative implications are going to be larger than you, your imagination so let's continue how to approach a question on quality management well when you are going to read a question now let me refer my top 20 maybe bradley maybe james maybe not in my top 20 but i yes i remember i need to come up with extra five maybe macau macau is not currently part of the top 20 but another question on quality management macau macau is a beautiful question it has got both quality management and ethics oh maybe for citya group which is a question from september 2022 yes uh winberry which we did yesterday and for citya are from the same family september 2022 so when you will approach those questions which are on quality management as a student if you want to understand the question you need to realize few things how an audit firm can possibly make a compromise on quality or what factors would make you realize that the quality was compromised during the audit who are you you would be an engagement quality reviewer so the audit is done and dusted but before we issue the audit report or maybe before we draft the audit report you as an engagement quality reviewer you are evaluating the whole audit for the sake of evaluating the quality and assuring the quality who are you you are an engagement quality reviewer and this whole some activity is a mandatory activity if the client is a listed company so who are you you are an engagement quality reviewer what are you up to you are evaluating the quality of the audit so where are you from you are from the audit firm but are you from the engagement team never you could be an engagement partner or if there is none available the firm could look for someone you know maybe outside the organization is this clear who is engagement quality reviewer what he is up to what she is up to she is up to evaluating the audit quality before we finally draft and sign the audit report who is going to draft and sign the audit report well most likely the engagement partner has to draft and if not but surely he or she is ultimately responsible and he or she has to sign the audit report but before the engagement partner is going to draft and sign the audit report there is a very holy activity and that activity is called engagement quality review the person who is going to perform it that person is called engagement quality reviewer well michael you are absolutely correct that individual has to be independent from the audit engagement team well done now so you have to be in his or her shoes now what are you looking at what are you you know evaluating number 1 whether the client has applied and followed all the relevant auditing standards have i s a been followed this engagement quality reviewer does not have directly anything to do with the accounting framework we as an auditor have to evaluate whether the auditing standards have been properly followed or not number 2 whether the work has been allocated to the appropriate level of staff for example in bradley uh, i think the audit of going concern was allocated to an individual who was relatively new she was a trainee or something so we need to make sure or we would evaluate whether the work has been allocated to the appropriate level of staff whenever a question says that the overall audit was time pressured you always treat it 
as a potential compromise on quality. In order to build your marks and in order to score big and in order to score full, you are not supposed to rely only on time pressure issue. You need to add more. For example, you need to say, yes, so there was an indication of time pressure. Moreover, on top of that, maybe that is why the manager has cut down on the sample size. Maybe because of the time pressure, that is why the manager has asked not to follow the audit plan. So time pressure itself is an indication of poor quality audit. But if you want to score full marks, you add, you need to add and you need to build just like yesterday, which where I taught how to add more depth in your answer when it comes to businesses. Similarly, for example, my client has purchased a new property, a new building, a new asset or something. And I have, well, the audit team has actually inspected the purchase invoice. Maybe they have recalculated the depreciation for the year as well. Maybe they have they have had a discussion regarding the useful life, useful life and the depreciation policy. So they have confirmed quite a lot of things, but they did not physically inspect the new plant or new machinery. And as a result of that, you cannot exactly confirm the existence of the new non-current asset. So has the appropriate type of evidence been obtained? Not really. So this is where you will be able to identify that there is a compromise on quality. Why I'm calling it a compromise? So if my client has not gathered or if my client was not, well, if my audit team was not able to physically inspect the plant or machinery, why I'm treating it as a compromise on quality? Because if the audit team did not physically inspect the asset, well, it means they do not have sufficient appropriate audit evidence with respect to the physical existence of the asset. So yes, I would say that the appropriate type of audit evidence has not been obtained. Okay, has the audit been performed in accordance with the audit plan? So to, uh, according to ISA 300, we are supposed to make an audit plan. Initially, we are going to make an audit strategy and that audit strategy will be transformed into the detailed audit plan. And when we are going to execute the audit, we are supposed to execute the audit in accordance with the audit plan. Are we allowed to change the audit plan? We can revise the audit plan if there is a genuine need for it. But if without any justifiable reason, the audit plan has been changed or if the audit plan has not been followed without any reason, well, it, it is always considered as a compromise on audit quality because when you are not going to follow a proper plan, you will not be able to gather sufficient appropriate audit evidence, which in turn could lead to audit risk because of the risk of issuing an incorrect audit opinion. And again, if the audit plan has not been followed, you might be able to relate it with the time pressure. You might be able to relate it with the competence or the integrity of the audit manager. So this is how you blend your answer. And this is how you score big when it comes to your park paper questions. So if the audit was not properly supervised or if the audit was not properly reviewed, well, 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 there is a huge possibility that there would be errors within the audit work and those errors would not be identified because nobody was supervising it. For example, in a past paper question, such as, I guess, Bradley or Jane or Macau, I don't exactly remember, the audit manager said that you two trainees, you guys have to review each other's work when you are done. Well, if the two trainees are going to be left on their own and if nobody is going to supervise them, what if they have what if they face certain challenges well how they are going to overcome those challenges well i believe those two trainees would have the same skill set moreover if those two supervisors or well if those two trainees are going to review each other's work 
Well, I don't think so that they will be able to identify and rectify any mistake because we need a senior to supervise. We need seniors to review the work of the juniors at each and every level of the audit firm in all the hierarchies. So guys, all those factors would lead to a situation where we are compromising on a thing called quality management. Well, what does that mean? It means the audit firm would lack sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Well, what does that mean? Why is it so important? Because if there is a lack of sufficient appropriate audit evidence, it means the auditor's opinion could be wrong and we call it audit risk. So please realize how quality management syllabus area C would lead you towards the syllabus area D. Because C is quality management, and if you're going to make a compromise on quality, automatically you will trigger audit risk. More importantly, let's roll back. If you as an audit firm are having familiarity threat, and if that familiarity threat is not well managed, as a result of that, you as an auditor would become sympathetic to trusting of the client. You will not be able to challenge the assumptions made or provided by the client. You will lose the professional skepticism and all that leads to a situation. And that situation is you will not be able to or you won't be gathering sufficient appropriate audit evidence. So please try to connect the dots. If there is a compromise on ethics, the syllabus area B, it will eventually lead to the compromise on the syllabus area C, quality management, which in turn leads to a compromise on the syllabus area D, audit risk. Is this clear? Are you absolutely clear why you got to prepare for B, followed by C, followed by B, followed by E, and another pro tip, okay, this is for everyone out there who is not currently part of the WIFI's batch because this is something which I emphasize a lot, you know, uh, during the normal classes. If you, well, Shayan, you raised this question that you are struggling a bit with the syllabus area F and I've already shared a couple of pro tips with you. Let me share one final tip. So once you are done with all those pre-acceptance considerations, all those procedures, all those reporting implications, now what? You will be excited to move towards the past paper questions of the syllabus area F. But before you move to the syllabus area F past paper question, do a favor to yourself. Again, Revise two, three questions on quality management, which you have already prepared. Again, revise four, five chunks, such as the chunk of the Kodoni, chunk of the Adam, chunk of the Pale, chunk of the Redback Sports Company, well, chunk of the Winberry, or maybe not Winberry, chunk of the Mercurio. Prepare those chunks relevant to ethics which are all part of the AAA master file. Well, why I'm saying that? Because in majority of the questions, which are under the umbrella of other assignments, the syllabus area F, you will realize that there is there are marks for the ethics. There are marks for the quality management. So you will start loving the past paper questions of the syllabus area F. Once ethics and quality management is strong and well prepared. So before you move to the syllabus area F past paper questions, make sure the past paper questions of ethics and quality management are super fresh and super strong. Is this clear? So let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. There is a past paper question called retriever. Now, as we speak right now, Retriever is not in my top 20. I might add it in my next five. Yes, I know I have to come up with those five questions, but I need time. I need to take care of certain things. I need to make sure those are not random or ordinary five questions. Now, let, let, let's consider an example. The question is called Retriever. 
Now, in retrieval, apparently the question is about Apparently, the question is about. Apparently, the question is about forensic audit. The question called retrieval is a question on forensic audit. So, this is a question called retrieval. Other assignments. Other assignments, and the question is called retrieval over here. Retrieval. Both retrieval. And beer, both questions are relevant to forensic audit. Okay, let's see what is so special about retriever. Okay, this is retriever. And there are two parts, part A, part B. Part B says, look at the part B. Using the information in Exhibit 2, recommend the procedures to be performed in determining the amount of the insurance claim. So the company is facing a very difficult situation. There was the burglary. So now, yes, there was a burglary. And their cell phones and their laptops, which they which they were, which were all stored in a location, they all were, you know, uh, the company has lost all of it. So the team came in and everything is lost now. Now they are claiming and they need to claim an amount to the insurance company. So this is a question you need to apply procedures. So a few moments ago, I you know, made you realize that you need to invest a day on the procedures of all the topics. So if you did that, you are done with the part B. You will be able to handle part B. So apparently this is a question on other assignment. But what about part A? Using the information in Exhibit 1, evaluate what? Quality management, the syllabus area C. Ethical and other professional issues, the syllabus area B. Uh oh, so imagine if your B and C are strong, you will enjoy this entire question in totality and you will be scored big. So what about part A and B? The audit has been quite time pressured. The, you know, the manager asked not to perform procedures on the director's emoluments and share capital, though these are material by nature. And even he asked to forget about the uh, statistical sampling method and use your own judgment. And two managers, the two managers were assigned to do the audit of trade payables. That's okay. But going concern as well. And we even... Help them with the calculation of deferred tax, which might lead to self-review threat. That could also lead to advocacy threat. The finance director does not have good enough competence to handle the deferred tax, which again creates a doubt over the competence of the finance director, which in turn leads to a situation where the financial statements overall could be materially misstated. So obviously, I'm not going into the detail of this question, but... Have you realized this question has got a lot of issues with respect to quality management and even ethics as well? Is this clear? Shayan, have you realized how it becomes more convenient sometimes to prepare syllabus area F if your B and C are strong? This is not the case for each and every question. This is not the case for each and every question. For example, hardly one week ago at WIPI, we did a question called Yes. Okay. So one week ago, we did a question called COBOLD, which is from December 2022 paper. Now, COBOLD is a full question. We did that, we did that in a live class. COBOLD is a full question on what? This is a full question on prospective financial information. The part A says, thank you, Sana. The part A says, evaluate the matters to be considered by the audit firm before accepting cobalt company as a client. For what? And the engagement to review and report on the capital expenditure forecast. So the client is called cobalt company. They have approached my audit firm called genome company and I have to evaluate certain mat matters or what factors I need to consider before I come up with a conclusion 
whether I need to accept this assignment or not. What kind of assignment? Review and report on the capital expenditure forecast. And this is a question which says evaluate the matters. So you can score one extra mark if you are going to come up with a balance and a proper conclusion at the end of your answer. So this part A is a full question. And again, few moments ago, I asked Shayan to invest a day and prepare all the acceptance considerations. So just imagine, Shayan, just imagine. What about part B? Assuming that the firm has accepted the engagement, now recommend the procedures which you need to perform in respect of the audit, or in respect of the client capital expenditure forecast. 10 marks, 10 procedures. Now imagine if you have prepared all those procedures, if you're double A strong, intentionally, in, for, for my triple A students, intentionally I have given you the access of a lecture on substantive procedures to all the batches. Why? Because your double A procedures have to be really strong in your triple A. So imagine if you have invested a day on all those procedures. Is this clear, Shan? Once you are going to prepare, once you are going to prepare yourself for the acceptance consideration, you can create few mnemonics for yourself. For example, this mnemonic DRIP EC, which I think we discussed yesterday as well. I think somebody posted it in the chat box as well. So yes, we need to know, is it going to be a limited distribution? You know, I need to know about the competence. I need to know about you know, resources, the availability of resources. And there are many criteria which are, so these, those headings are generic, but you've got to utilize the information available in the question as much as you can. Okay, so let me go back to the quality management. Let's quickly finish that. So, uh, well, within the chat box, there was a question, how much marks for each point on quality management and ethics? Generally speaking, one mark, one mark per valid point. But out of a situation or out of a story, three different points, four different points could be created. So for example, if your client, for, let me give you an example. For example, for example, for example, the audit committee has requested the client that dear Sana, could you please accompany us and be part of a meeting with the representation of the bank? We need to discuss the finalization of loan. Well, that would create self, well, that would create advocacy threat because we'll be seen as taking the sides of the client. So you can you you can explain that that what negative implications that would have, and you will score one mark. Moreover, another possible mark. We can have a discussion. We'll be seen as assuming a management responsibility as well. So you can discuss that and you can score a mark. And then you can recommend an action and you can score a mark. So one mark per valid point. But within the question, as far as the information is concerned, there will be three, four, five information. For a 10 mark question, there will be three, four things. But there will be different angles for it. So you can score many more marks. Is this clear? Somebody please help us in the chat box with that drip EC. Those who actually attended the live class, can you please help in the chat box? Okay. So let, let me continue and finish off the quality management. We are 80 percent, we are done with you know almost 80 percent of the topic. As a student, option number one, option number one. You have got practical experience and exposure and you have been part of the audits which were high quality audits. As a student, you have got experience where you have been part of poor quality audits. So as a student, if you have got practical experience, if you have got practical experience, you will be able to differentiate between the high quality audit and a poor quality audit. When it comes to triple A, examiner would assume that you've got some practical experience. So if you've 
if you do not have any practical experience well in that case you need to attend the lectures you need to read a lot you need to study book but obviously your practical experience that does play an important role so if you were part of certain audits you might have realized well or you can imagine or you can recall well that audit was a high quality audit and well that audit was not that a high quality audit now i want to know what are the features of high quality audit thank you very much and in the chat box shayan was trying his level best but i think that one message does the job nice and easily and yes once you are once you are done with this mnemonic well first of all you got to prepare these things from the study text or once you are obviously from the acc study up notes once you are done with that if you are going to practice a question called cobalt you will enjoy that question okay now i want to know what are the features of high quality audit well a high quality in a high quality audit the audit team must have invested sufficient time not only in planning the audit they must have sufficient time in doing the audit and in reviewing the audit so sufficient time a at the planning stage b at the execution stage when we were applying the procedures when we when we were gathering the evidence and even sufficient time at the review stage i'm not asking you to allocate time in three different and three equal proportions but what i'm saying is sufficient time to all three stages of the audit is this clear so maybe when you will attempt the paper the question would say sufficient time or great time was invested on the audit planning so you will say okay in this question there is no time management issue but at the end of the audit you team members got sick and the audit was you know paused and in order to you know just meet the deadline at the end of the audit the review was compromised so time time allocation of sufficient time that has to be fair with respect to planning stage with respect to when we when we were actually doing the audit and with respect to the review stage as well are we clear how the examiner could play with the time pressure at a different stage or in different stages or maybe in two stages everything went pretty good but in in some stage in one stage things were not that great similarly from planning to doing from doing to reviewing the work there has to be appropriate staffing with appropriate or relevant experience and number third for example examiner might create a situation or a question for you where some high risk area was not properly assessed by the audit firm they initially realized it's a high risk area but out of nowhere it was allocated when doing so it was allocated to someone who was not that experienced or not a suitable candidate or maybe 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 a high risk area was identified by sana and she rightly allocated that work to shayan who has got the relevant experience but once shayan was done and dusted nobody was there to focus or nobody was there to review that work so maybe the review was not performed by the right people last but surely not the least i think i have emphasized this thing earlier on as well and even that question called macau would make you realize how quality management and ethical issues they tend to overlap with each other so if there are clear indicators of ethical threat within the question within your real life within your professional life and if those ethical threats are not mitigated with the help of safeguards or with the help of appropriate actions well boy 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 those compromises on ethical threats would certainly mean that there is a compromise on the quality of the audit are we clear are we clear can i move yes as a, if if it is a listed client there has to be an engagement quality review okay so what about review as well review has to be on a timely basis 
for each and every stage of the audit, there has to be a review. You cannot rely for the sake of review at the end of the audit. Review is an ongoing activity. And for, for each and every level of review, for each and every review, the one who has performed the work should not be involved in the review. And the one who is involved in the review has to be a more senior person. Well, you should be familiar with two different reviews. One is called pre-issuance review. Second one is called post-issuance review, post-implementation review. It's called the cold review. Now, what is the difference between hot review and cold review? Well, hot review means we are done with the audit, but the audit report is is still with the audit firm, which means we have not drafted and signed the audit report as yet. So before we sign and before I draft the audit report, we are going to have an engagement quality review, also known as a, you know, a, a hot review, also known as engagement quality review. And this is a mandatory requirement for listed audit clients or high risk audit clients. The second one is called cold review. Now, what is cold review? Cold review means we are done with the audit and the audit report has already been issued. So if the audit report has already been issued, now what's the point of reviewing things? Now we want to review and we and that review could be performed by an audit, you know, quality manager, audit quality manager. And that manager is going to select few audits which the audit firm has performed. The audit report has already been issued, done and dusted, just to make sure or just to realize is whether we have made certain mistakes during the audit. Now, we cannot undo those mistakes because the audit report has already been issued, but we want to learn from the mistakes and we want to improve with respect to the future. Is this clear, the difference between the two? Well, Ford is a question, Belford is a question which is a question on cold review. And Belford is a question available on the ACCS practice platform. This is a question from your specimen exam. Whereas Bradley is a question which is available in your exam kit. And that question is a question on engagement quality review also known as hot review. And both of these questions are available in the portal. Both of these questions are available in the top 20. Is this clear? Why would we perform cold review? Because as a firm, we want to learn from the mistake and we want to, rec we want to improve the future quality. We want to improve the quality of audits in the future. That is the purpose and objective of cold review. We want to learn from the mistakes which we have committed. But try to realize when you are involved in an engagement quality review, and if you will realize that there is a compromise or a mistake, you can still bounce back because the audit report is yet to be issued. But when it comes to cold review, the firm can improve. They can learn, but they cannot undo the audit report or the audit opinion. Is this clear? Is it clear now? Cold reviews are conducted on new client always impact of listed or not. Well, the, the firm will select clients. So yes, we might prioritize new clients, but engagement quality review is a mandatory activity for every listed client. On the other hand, when it comes to cold review, the firm would select few clients out of the menu. Is this clear? Okay, second last, well, almost last five, five minutes of this topic. So can you briefly explain the pre-issuance and post-issuance? Well, first of all, you got to note down two questions. Which two questions? The first question is, Bradley and the second question okay the second question is not available in top 20 so that would be my one of the top okay the second question is well fought and that question is available in the specimen exam 
So if you are going to read the starting paragraph or the introduction of the question called Bradley and the introductory portion of the... So this is the question called Bradley. Give me a minute, please. Okay. It is 1st July 20X5. Now look for the client year end. The audit of Bradley Company's financial statement for the year ended 30th April 20X5 is nearly complete and the auditor's report is due to be issued next week. What, what does that mean? It means, is it a hot review or a cold review? Is it pre-issuance or is it post-issuance? What does issuance mean? Issuance means the audit report which contains the audit opinion. So categorically, the question says, the auditor report is due to be issued next week. So what are you up to? You are performing an engagement quality review on the audit of Bradley Company, one company. It is a significant new client of your firm. So it's a listed company. You are performing an engagement quality review. So you will realize, for example, for example, one of the audit assistant told you many things. For example, the audit assistant told you that the finance director was creating pressure. He was not cooperating, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they made quite a lot of compromises. Obviously, I'm not going into the details of this question. I was assigned to the audit of provision. One of the provision was relevant to 10,000 relates to a legal claim. An employee was injured. And when I read the correspondence, I wanted to contact with the lawyer, but the finance director told me not to approach the lawyer. So this is a question on pre-issuance. Now, what is the difference between pre-issuance and post-issuance? Let's go for a question called Wellford. Okay, here we go. So this is a question called Wellford. And this question is available on the ACCS practice platform because this is a question from your specimen exam. Crux group is a question from the specimen exam. So as the Wellford. Okay, what about Wellford? Just, I just need one minute. It is 1st July 2008 five. No surprise. Who are you? Now you are an audit manager. You are an audit manager where? In an audit firm called Wellford & Company, a firm of chartered certified accountants. And what's your role? Your role includes performing post-issuance audit quality reviews. And you have been asked to review the work, the audit work performed on a client called Rivers Company for the financial year ended 31st January 2005. The client's year end was 31st January. Today is 1st July. I'm dead sure, I'm dead sure the audit report has already been issued. The following exhibits available below provide relevant to the question. So there are two exhibits. River Company is a listed company. So if it is a listed company, they should have conducted a pre-issuance review as well. So at the end of the answer, at the end of the answer, I would say that there are many compromises on quality and I wonder whether engagement quality review was conducted or not. Because it's a listed client, they should have they should have done that. The River Company is a listed company operating in construction industry. The company complies with corporate governance regulation and has an audit committee. River Company has been an audit client of the audit firm for eight years. And at that point of time, during this time, Co-op remains the engagement partner, which is a compromise on ethics because of the familiarity threat. Okay, the last sentence. River Company's audit report was signed by Bob, the engagement partner, and issued last week. So the audit report has already been issued. Now, this is a question which is not currently available in the top 20, but I think I'm going to incorporate this question in my top five. So the partner just gave two hours, which itself is a shocking news. Even the total number of hours are on a very lower side. 90% of the work was performed by the assistant and nobody was reviewing their work. Even the senior audit manager or maybe the, yeah, maybe the audit manager, Anita, she did the work on going concern and she was just pr promoted. 
you know, from the review of the audit working papers, you realize that the going concern was a significant risk and all the work on all the work on the going concern was performed by Mary, an assistant, who, who is yet to qualify AAA. So obviously I'm not going into the details of this question. This question is available in the Wiki portal. I believe this question is also available in the crash batch as well. So revision batch as well. So am I clear? Are you clear? So those who were not clear with respect to the two, are you clear now? Seven years, yeah, seven years, you are right. Managers can perform going concern. Yes, going concern is something which should be handled by manager with appropriate experience. Yes, Hassan, we did well forward. Want to have bet on that? Hassan, would you like to have a bet on that? Well, there is a thing called cut off. So forget about the previous bets. If you want to have a bet, let me know. Bye bye. Okay, so now I want to move towards the. Okay, there's one thing still left. Okay, give me a minute. So another pro tip when you are dealing a question on quality management, always start your point with a fact from the question itself. But mind you, those are not going to score great marks. It is just to facilitate your answer. So you need to identify a compromise on quality from the question itself. But then you got to build images between different facts. Now, what does that mean? Build images between different facts. Well, for example, the question says that there was a time pressure when they were performing the procedure. So when they were doing the audit, they had to rush. And maybe that is why the manager decided not to use the statistical sampling technique, which was, which should have been used or which was agreed at the planning stage. So this is how you build the dots. So when, you, when I say build images between different facts, it means you got to use one piece of information and in order to, you know, in, in order to create depth in your answer, in order to come up with a powerful point, you got to relate it with some other information available in the question. So, well, another pro tip, if you want to nail this topic, well, read the requirement carefully and try to understand when you are explaining your answer, why, why at the end of each point, make it clear why you think that this is a problem in relation to quality. How that would lead to a situation where the audit firm would lack sufficient appropriate audit evidence. How this creates a problem in the context of quality. How the audit firm could be in a situation where the reputation of the firm or the client could be at stake because of the incorrect audit opinion. So you got to make sure you actually understand what you are writing. Last but surely not the least, do not repeat points. If you have already explained the negative consequences of time management, do not use the same explanation for some other point. Do not repeat same explanation again and again in different contexts, in different points, because that will not score you marks. So are we clear now? Is this clear to everyone now? Can I have some confirmation? Is this clear to everyone? Sir, when we, okay, there is an important question in the chat box. Sir, is there any question on cold review? Yeah, I just mentioned a question on cold review. Well, Ford, from your, well, Ford, from your ACCA specimen exam. Okay, chat box. Sir, when we have question on reviews, are we using the same concept in quality management to answer the question? Oh, that's a brilliant question. So when it comes to the application of co concepts within the context of quality management, whether it's a question on pre-issuance or post-issuance, whether it's a question on syllabus area C, pre-issuance, whether it's a well, whether it's a question on pre-issuance syllabus area E or post-issuance syllabus area C. 99% of your concepts and, your, the, and the chemistry remains the same. There is one difference that you cannot ask the management to do this or that. 
or you cannot ask the audit team to go and select more sample or you know recalculate certain things because of the cold review the audit has already finished that's the only difference is this clear okay so let's explore a past paper question a relatively difficult question and the name of the question is porticia group so before you move on to this particular question there are few prerequisites prerequisite number 1 you should read a technical article on group auditing you should be absolutely well prepared and clear for the questions maybe after that or before that for the questions called wellford and bradley okay let's go to a very important question uh no abdul hanan uh, the the session has is not available as yet sir how can we explain the ways to improve audit in case of cold reviews well we might uh, we, we might decide to come up with training to the audit manager we might decide that we need to devote more experienced staff uh for the sake of audit in the next time around or we might say well it depends on the question to be very honest well you know don't worry um uh, just focus on a question called wellford i'll i'll add that question in the in the revision batch and i'll make sure it is part of the next top 5 questions as well okay let's go to the porcitia group by the way why i'm going towards porcitia group because if you check out james and thomason and weston these three questions are already available in the wiki's portal so keeping up with the legacy i intentionally want to discuss a question right now which is not currently available in the wiki's portal so that is why i am going for a question called for sitia group from the september 2022 and those who missed yesterday session well yesterday we discussed yesterday we discussed winberry from the same september 2020 2022 and the reason was same because all those other questions are already available in the wiki portal so let's go to the porcitia group let's see how complicated how difficult this question is so before i move to the exam requirement i would like to read the introduction and no surprise it is first july 20xy who are you now you are an audit manager and you are currently conducting an engagement quality review so basically you are an engagement quality reviewer and you are conducting an engagement quality review on the audit of porcitia group which is a listed entity so your firm is appointed to audit the consolidated financial statements and the individual financial statements of all group companies so you are the auditor of the parent company and all the subsidiaries are also audited by you so in this question there is no flavor of component auditor so those who have actually attended my lecture on james company which was i think in the live class number 3 of this session i think so i'm not that sure yes oh no 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 quality management along with james company was the live class number 2 of this session now in james company we had to face a music called component auditor why component auditor because the firm audits all group companies but one subsidiary which is called cameron company is audited by carry associates so who is going to be carry associates for us we call them component auditor why we call them component auditor because one of the component of the group which is called cameroon company a subsidiary of my client is audited by someone else and that someone else is called carry associate and that someone is also known as component auditor are you going to blindly rely on the work 
of the carry associates no you have to evaluate their professional competence their license still you need to review their work you need to evaluate what kind of prior experience they have what kind of prior experience you have in relation to them you got to evaluate their reputation then you got to review the work they have performed maybe on a sample basis and what not so guys those who are preparing triple a by themselves this is a very 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 important question which is called james company and this is in my top 20 this is a question available for the reset batch for the regular batch and surely this is available for the revision crack batch as well okay let's come back to the four cpr am i clear with the concept of component auditor you got to read a technical article which is available in my top 20 group auditing well the engagement quality reviewer has to be someone who is not part of the audit team but that someone could be from the from a department called quality assurance or quality management department and from and within that department audit manager could be assigned maybe he or she is finally or eventually reporting to his or her manager so yes it's all right there is no issue as of now yes thank you jennifer thank you lovely okay the following exhibits available below provide information relevant to the question and there is one exhibit only unlike james in james there are three exhibits because in james there are three different clients and you know what i think james is a question on okay james is a question on post issuance what about for citya for citya is a question on pre issuance okay that is why i did not include well for in my top 20 see i told you that when i was preparing that top 20 i invested quite a lot of time and energy and you know shayan used to come up with a follow up sir is is it ready is it ready is it ready so i took 2 3 4 days because i was working and i wanted to make sure that it is a masterpiece and there should be you know i should be able to cover pretty much everything so so those who wanted to have a question on post issuance are you happy now i've told you two questions on post issuance a james b belford from the specimen exam is it clear james is a fairly recent question because james is from 2021 okay guys we are done with the introduction and let's forget about the exhibit 1 let's straight away jump to the exam requirement evaluate the quality management and other professional matters identified during your review so who are you you are an engagement quality reviewer forget about your de designation your role is engagement quality reviewer what are you up to you have to evaluate the quality and you have to evaluate other professional matters as well maybe something relevant to ethics or something you know in respect of the planning not only for the planning but the performance of the forsythia group audit and recommend appropriate actions what actions we need to take now guys if you are a very well prepared student right now you are in a position to score one mark out of it and you are in a position to score one mark out of it is there anyone who could bless us with those two marks how can i score those two marks for mid size firm is quality management is not no 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 any other thing yes michael good so the first mark could be scored by highlighting or appreciating the fact that considering the fact for city a group is a listed entity well this engagement quality review is a mandatory requirement so considering the fact that magnolia company is actually executing the same well that is a good sign or that must be appreciated for the sake of overall quality of the audit 
so you can score one mark nice and easy okay how can we score another one mark well once we are done with the entire question we will try to come up with a balanced conclusion and once we will draft the conclusion we will say that these are few factors which need to be you know seriously considered and remedial actions must be designed immediately because these are the few most important and sensitive quality management issues so out of this question well i assume you will be able to identify you know four five issues and out of those four five issues there would could be multiple two three issues so maybe 10 to 15 points are available but you got to come up with two three most important and sensitive issues and you can you could highlight them and you could create a well balanced conclusion and you can score extra one mark if you want to understand more about it well you've got to read the examiner report for the same okay i think it's time to go and read the question so let's concentrate this is the last part probably of the today's lecture so you got to concentrate the audit of the group for Scythia group for the year ended 31st March 2005 is in the completion stage. And the audit report is due to be issued next week. So this is a question more like more like Bradley and it's not like Welford, it's not like James. So Bradley and for Scythia are, are more or less same James and Welford are more or less same. But within those, you know, considering all those four questions, 90% stuff would be same. The group has diverse operations focusing on manufacturing, but is also involved with activities in some other areas such as agriculture. The draft consolidated financial statements include revenue of 129 million, which has gone up in relation to the last year because last year it was 113. PBT is 18.6, which has gone down as compared to the last year, which is unusual. The revenue has gone up, but the profit has gone down and the total asset has increased as well. So this is a manufacturing company. They are involved in some other activities such as agriculture as well. Okay. You have discussed the group audit with a junior member of the audit team who made the following comments about how it was planned and carried out. So remember three stages, plan, you know, how you carry it out and then finally review. And you are part of the review right now. Okay, let me take to the top tutor tips now. This question covers quality management and an engagement quality review. Audit quality will be impacted. Now, how audit quality tends to be impacted? If you have attended today's lecture, audit quality will be impacted if the audit firm does not comply with professional guidance. What kind of professional guidance? For example, if we are going to compromise on auditing standards, if we are going to compromise on quality management standards, if we are going to compromise on ethical standards, as a result of a compromise on any of the three or all three, there is going to be a compromise on the overall quality of the audit. The question is set in the context of a group audit. So you must be clear and comfortable with the concept of subsidiaries, the concept of goodwill, the concept of component auditor. So you've got to read a technical article, which I have emphasized a lot in the past two days. Consider, you need to consider, whether the auditing standards have been followed. You need to consider whether sufficient appropriate evidence has been obtained or not. For example, you need to consider whether the auditor has, you know, what state, what the ISA says. What does the auditing standard say and explain the auditor has made compliance with it or the auditor has not made compliance with it where sufficient appropriate audit evidence has not been obtained. So if you realize the question that sufficient appropriate audit evidence has not been obtained, 
explain what evidence should have been obtained that would meet the criteria. So you need to recommend what needs to be done. Now, what needs to be done depends upon if it is a hot review, I would say I would come up with a terminology where I will say that this could be done, this could be achieved now. But if it's a cold review question, we cannot change the past. Okay. So one mark first, as this is a listed entity, it is appropriate that an engagement quality review is taking place because this is in accordance with international standard on quality management one, which requires that an engagement quality review must be performed on the audit of listed entities. So here we go. You have scored one mark. Now, you need to present your answer nice and easily. Now, this is your first heading, one. This is your second heading, two. This is your third. This is your fourth. Now, why there are four broad headings? And then conclusion. Now, with the help of this conclusion, you can score another one mark. Okay. Now, what about examiner comments? This was a quality management question with a single requirement to evaluate quality management issues in relation to a group. Professional marks were available for analysis, evaluation, professional skepticism, and judgment and commercial acumen, so no marks for communication skill. It is the first quality management question under the new suit of the quality management standard and candidates were required with an article. Okay, yes, there is an article on quality management. Answers to this question were mixed. Candidates who answered the question from a practical approach, applying the principles of quality management to the scenario scored well. The majority of the answers, however, were generic. So don't just come up with generic, unapplied, failing to use the information failing to apply the info knowledge you have. The question covered four specific situations, and that is why there are, broadly speaking, four different headings. So when, once you will read this question, you will realize, broadly speaking, there are four major quality-related issues. Dear AAA students, dear AAA friends, you got to understand the modern AAA examiner will not give you 25 or 30 different stories or 25 different situations where there is a compromise on quality. The examiner will give you two, three, hardly one or two issues because in real life, practically speaking, when KPMG is going to perform an engagement quality review, when on behalf of KPMG, you will perform an engagement quality review you will not realize that there are 45 compromises on quality. You will realize there are two major instances. There are two major issues. But within those two issues, you can score 10, 12 marks. So why this question has got four different situations? Because the total marks are 25. If you will come up with an exam question such as this for 8 or 10 marks, Hardly there will there would be two major issues. This question covers four specific situations which had been identified by the engagement quality reviewer through a review of the audit file through the discussion with the you know audit junior. Further information regarding the audit process was obtained through discussion with audit junior, but their about their experience on the audit. So the audit junior will reveal few dirty things. Is this clear? So now you got to read the examiner report. There are four stories and this is the examiner's comment about the first issue. Similarly, this is the examiner's comment about the second issue. This is the examiner's comment about the third issue and this is about the fourth one. So, for example, according to the examiner, the fourth and the final issue in the question was centered around a subsidiary. Mind you, you are the auditor of all the subsidiaries, unlike James Company. And that one subsidiary was not involved in a typical manufacturing sector where the company or the group operates. Rather, that subsidiary is operating in the agriculture sector. Unusual. Specialized sector. Not your typical one. Because 
over in the agricultural industry the the valuation of inventory the valuation of nrv the you know the valuation of non current asset is a different it's different it's challenging so several issues arose with respect to this subsidiary and should have been subject to more detailed audit procedure but when you will read the question you will realize that this was not the case and that is why it's a compromise on audit quality so specialized you know this is how if you could read the question and then read the examiner report automatically your exam preparation would be skyrocketed okay i want to read one another part of the examiner report the second issue in the question is where the audit firm has outsourced revenue recognition in several subsidiaries to another audit firm oh, oh. so the audit firm the audit firm was involved in the audit of forsythia group and with respect to multiple subsidiaries we outsource the audit of revenue and we can score a mark by highlighting the fact that revenue is always considered as a high risk area it is always considered vulnerable always you know have a it could have fraudulent activities as well okay find the outsource it but to whom camellia associates but without checking the competence and objectivity of camellia associates well that's pretty bad we should have evaluated the competence and objectivity beforehand most candidates identified the camellia associates should be assessed for those criteria and their work should have been reviewed but few candidates questioned the appropriateness of outsourcing such a material risk area in particular so try to understand what examiner is trying to teach you examiner is trying to teach you that yes you can score marks by criticizing the audit firm that why the hell they have outsourced the work to camellia associates without evaluating their objectivity and competence yes you can score marks but a very well prepared and a visionary student having commercial acumen would say why the audit firm why the hell audit firm would decide to outsource such an important thing so fewer candidates were so well prepared the main motivator for outsourcing was to keep costs low and the candidates were able to score even professional marks for questioning why the costs need to be minimized so another mark by saying maybe they have outsourced this because they want to cut down their cost but another professional mark could be scored why the hell they want to cut down their cost maybe there is a self interest maybe they have quoted inappropriate thing initially and now they want to curtail and cut down thing is this clear so when i say invest 8 to 10 hours read the examiner report this is the beauty and the importance of the examiner report but is it okay to outsource significant risk area to a third party jennifer have i answered your question you need to raise question mark on that and that is how you could score another mark and then on top of that you can score professional marks you can simply score one mark by saying the audit firm should have considered thousand times before before outsourcing such a high risk area audit to a third party that 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 outsourcing itself is questionable forget about the fact that they have evaluated the competence and objectivity of camellia associates or not to begin with this idea is a poor idea jennifer am i clear have i answered your question okay great thank you so i think we are in a great position to tackle this question because we have already we can outsource any area if it is not high yes, yes we can we can out, outsourcing is not is it's not a crime but we have to realize what are we outsourcing so is there any other valuable information available in the examiner report yes indeed for example there is a story about the first issue the first issue related to an acquisition made after the hearing 
So if an acquisition made after the year end, uh, well, that could create a subsequent event, and a subsequent event might need disclosure. Yes, the audit engaged, but the but the finance director says we are not going to disclose it, and we will account it account it for in the next year. And the audit pa engagement partner agreed with the client without any you know questioning attitude. The audit engagement partner agreed with the client position as this would have formed a material subsequent event requiring disclosure. This was incorrect. Why the hell audit partner has agreed with the engagement partner? Uh, why the hell audit engagement partner has, has agreed with the client? You need to raise concerns and question marks over the competence of the of the partner, over the integrity of the engagement partner. More importantly, over the competence. Maybe it's too trusting of the client. Final issue in the question. The third issue was the delegation of audit work on intangible assets to a junior member of the audit team. Now, if you have already attended my lecture on Wellport, you will realize that over there, going concern was handed over to a trainee. Now, in this question, a junior member is working on intangible assets. And it was complex. And he, the, 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 the auditor was not having sufficient knowledge and experience. Okay, so I think we are in a great position to handle the question now. Let's quickly go through the question. Okay, let's start the question. The real question begins now. Don't forget about the one mark with the help of engagement quality reviewer. Don't forget about the one mark available in the conclusion paragraph. On 10 June 2005, today is 1st July. The client's year end was 31st March. Okay. On 10 June 2005, the group acquired another subsidiary, Robin Company, which is forecast to increase the group's total revenue by around 20%. So they have acquired a subsidiary after the year end. And that is a major acquisition because that acquisition will boost the revenue by 20%. This meant that the group CFO had little time to discuss matters with the auditing. Okay, so the group CFO could not discuss the issue with the auditing. The acquisition has taken place quickly, so it did not form part of the audit planning, which took place in January. So when we were planning this audit in January, we didn't know that, and this was not part of the audit plan. The audit engagement partner said, we did not need to perform audit work on any aspect of the acquisition, as according to the CFO, it will be accounted for in next year financial statements. I'm sure you can score multiple marks. First of all, you can score a mark that the audit plan can be and should be revised if the situation demands for it. So yes, okay, fine, they were having an audit plan in January, but they should have revised it, revised it as the situation unfolded itself. If the company has acquired, uh, you know, if the company has, has, is involved in a major acquisition, the audit team should have revised the plan. So that's the first compromise on, on quality because the auditing standard ISA 300 have not been followed. Second, well, in Wellford and in J, well, in Wellford, there is another story. They did not follow the plan. The plan was there. They did not follow the plan. Over here, they should have revised the plan. And secondly, this seems to be a transaction which would be accounted for in accordance with ISA. Well, ISA 10 events after reporting period. And as an auditor, I need to apply ISA 560. And I need to make sure that considering the fact it's a non-existing material event, the client must disclose it. But but the client is not going, but the client has not disclosed it. So this is a non-compliance with an accounting standard, and the engagement partner seems to have agreed, which is not great. We need to raise question marks over the competence of the engagement partner. Due to pressure to reduce the cost, don't forget it. They want to reduce the cost. Keep it in mind. The audit manager arranged for the audit produce uh, procedures on revenue recognized by several significant subsidiaries, including a subsidiary in the agricultural industry, to be delegated to Camellia Associates, an unconnected firm. The audit manager said we can rely on the evidence obtained by Camellia Associates as they are a firm of qualified accountants. This justification 
is not good enough. I think we have already discussed, there are marks on saying this area should not have been outsourced at all. Secondly, even if we have to outsource anything to Camellia Associates, we should have evaluated their competence and objectivity first. And when we are going to rely on the work of any third party, we should review their work. So there are multiple opportunities of scoring marks. And I also audited the group's intangible assets, which involved evaluating which uh, which involved evaluating the assumptions relating to the appropriateness of capitalization of 1.2 million of development costs in the year. Who is I, the audit junior member? So you know you can criticize why this was this such delicate work of such material amount of 1.2 million was allocated to him. Another mark. I could not discuss with the CFO and no one else was available. Why the it is not possible for an audit trainee, a junior member, to confront or to constructively challenge such a senior person such as CFO. And he was not, not available either. So I agreed the assumption from, for example, relating to technical feasibility and commercial viability to the group's business plan and concluded that they were consistent. So, so the assumptions were not critically challenged. That amount of 1.2 million, whether it actually meets the capitalization criteria or not, it, does, it was not evaluated by the audit firm. And no senior was involved. This is the first year the development costs have been recognized as an intangible asset in the group financial statement. Considering the fact this is the first time ever they are recognizing it, there is an inherent risk. So considering there was an inherent risk of material misstatement, more senior individual should have been allocated and a relatively more senior person should have reviewed the work. You company, which operates in the agriculture industry, is a subsidiary of the group. At the audit planning stage, in line with the previous audit, it was not identified as a component which needs to be visited for the audit work to be performed. Another negligence, considering it's a specialized client, considering the risk is on the higher side, we should have allocated more time and resources. Maybe we are not visiting because we want to cut down the cost. However, due to the specialist nature of the operations, the question itself says the specialist nature of the operations, a consultant should have been used to provide input on some technical matters as stated in the audit strategy plan. So as per the plan, a consultant should be hired. But due to the cost implication, again cost, the consultant was not engaged. And the section of the audit strategy and the audit plan containing instructions relating to the consultant was deleted from the audit file. Now listen to me guys, if you have worked practically, something was part of the audit plan and eventually the audit plan was genuinely changed. It, the change, let's assume the change was bona fide. Let's assume the change was an honest change. Still, you are not allowed to delete the earlier plan. So why the hell those pages were deleted? Maybe those pages were deleted so that subsequently, nobody will be able to identify that we actually did not follow the plan. So that raises question marks over the integrity of the person who is involved in all this. Following your conversation with audit assistant, you reviewed the audit working papers and found the following. So now you are done with the now you are done with the junior member. The audit evidence obtained by Camellia Associate has not been reviewed by the audit manager or partner. So adding insult to the injury, A, that work should not have been outsourced. B, before outsourcing, we should have evaluated the competence and objectivity. C, we should have, C, now come, before any professional mark, C, we should have evaluated the work and some senior person such as manager should have evaluated the work performed by Camellia Associates considering it's a high risk area. They should have challenged their assumptions. They should have evaluated their, their, whether the methodologies used by Camellia Associates are reasonable or not. No further evidence has been obtained relating to development expenditure. Another huge compromise Considering this is the first time they are capitalizing it, there is a huge possibility they might be making mistake. And the U company has got a total asset of 60.5 million and their revenue is 6.5 million. So there is a huge dip in their assets and this U company represents a, a significant subsidiary. So there are clear compromises on the quality of audit. In the chat box, Yes, thank you, Varsha. Welford. Uh, familiarity thread for the uh, I um, maybe I missed it. 
Hachi, similarity threat, how? Risk assessment is a continuous process. So the plan has to be revised if any chances are there throughout the audit. Yes, well done, well done. So once you are done with the examiner report, this is ACCA's official marking guide. And as you guys were asking it earlier on, one mark is available for each well-explained point. Okay. One mark could be scored by, you know, with by in introduction, the reason for the engagement quality review. Now what? One mark is available for the overall conclusion. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25. So there are multiple, multiple marks excluding the professional marks. So we need 20 and there are 25 or more points. So let's see what we identified. Is it available? Let's see. Let, I want to go to the problem number two. So Camellia Associates work should have been a review of their work performed. We should have gathered more knowledge and understanding. Well, Camellia Associates, oh, well, sorry, sorry. Maybe Camellia Associates may not have sufficient knowledge and understanding of the group. There is a huge increase in revenue that increases. The, you can calculate the percentage increase in revenue. It means revenue is a high risk area. And if it's revenue is a high risk area, delegation of work of such high risk area is not appropriate. And if the work was performed by Camellia Associates, it's okay. The work should have been reviewed by a senior member, such as manager. Their methodology should have been tested. What about development expenditure? There is a huge possibility that considering the fact this is the first time ever they are going to capitalize development expenditure, they, are going, they have incurred development expenditure, they have wrongly classified revenue expenditure as a development expenditure in order to increase the profit. Mind you, in the question, there is an increase in profit. Huge increase. So considering no review was performed, nobody challenged assumptions, so insufficient evidence is available. So we should perform additional procedures immediately because the audit report is yet to be signed. Similarly, for the sake of revenue, okay, fine, we outsource it. We cannot undo it now. But at least, at least we should review the work performed. The work performed should be subject to urgent review. That's the difference between hot review and cold review. I can still go for urgent review. Insufficient audit evidence obtained over assumptions, additional procedures should be performed now. The ball is still in my court. The audit report is due to be signed next week. So for the sake of Camellia Associates, Okay, I cannot undo. We have outsourced it. Time is over. But at least the work performed by Camellia Associates should be subject to an urgent review. Okay, fine. Development expenditure was allocated to a wrong person. But at least now we can review the, you know, supporting documentation in relation to that development expenditure. What about you limited? Like this is likely to require being visited for audit procedures. We need to visit the premises of that U company. And we need to discuss with the partner why an engagement was not, uh, why the consultant was not involved. And I need to inquire why audit strategy documents were deleted without any justification. Possible issue of integrity. Maybe the integrity is not intact. Maybe they want to hide something. So I need to challenge the, the work they have already performed. Mind you, the partner seems to be not so competent. So that raises the doubts over, over the other works of the partner as well. That acquisition of Robin Company is a non-existing subsequent event. You can score one mark and you can say that that must be disclosed in accordance with IAS 10. The audit partner has ignored the guidance of the IAS 10 and he seems to be in agreement with the client without any reason. Maybe he's trying to cut down the cost. So the Partner does not seem to be a responsible person. 
and he seems to be lacking the the integrity lacking the competence maybe the budget constraints are so impediment because once the budget constraints are there professional skepticism is usually compromised so budget constraint is always going to create a problem with respect to professional competence audit planning should be revised and revisited when new information comes so clearly there is a lack of competence and deliberate omission of information which increases the risk of material misstatement we we need to urgently apply or procedures we need to confirm whether a sufficient appropriate and an adequate disclosure has been made by client in relation to that non existing material event we need to discuss with the audit committee immediately that you guys have to you, you guys have to disclose the disclosure you have to disclose the disclosure in relation to that non existing but a material event that acquisition is this clear yes we need to apply further procedures on revenue but hasan we have already outsourced it so how are we going to apply further procedures we will evaluate the work performed by camellia associates on a sample basis we will review the methodologies and assumptions used by camellia associates just to make sure it is consistent so we cannot blindly rely on the work of the camellia camellia associates few mistakes are irreversible you should not have outsourced it you should have evaluated the competence and objectivity first but okay fine but at least now you can review their work okay another question sir can you explain you limited what about you limited well you limited in case of you limited the company did not visit it then so you need to make sure that they we actually visit in case of you limited certain pieces certain pieces of audit strategy document have been deleted so you need to raise concerns over the integrity so there is a possible you know there is a possible issue of integrity and you you need to make them understand that well in the answer you will say that audit strategy and audit plan documents should never be changed without any justification and even if there is a change you cannot delete so there is a serious indication of lack of integrity and maybe maybe another mark maybe that subsidiary was not visited just to cut down on the cost okay guys now let me go back to the chat box and if you have got any concerns or questions please raise it now i well if if i am a triple a student and if i have to attempt triple a exam on thursday 7th march 2024 to be very honest in the last 20 odd hours i would have invested 10 hours on triple a and i would have prepared three technical articles these three technical articles first second third and i would have prepared winberry which we discussed yesterday and i would have even read the examiner report for the same and if i am a triple a student who is bound to be successful i would prepare for sitia group james these two questions today when you will encounter james you will you have to tackle laws and regulations as well within the winberry laws and regulation is also there so that you know that's going to be great you need to read another technical article on laws and regulation and there is one more question on quality management where is that yes bradley bradley james porsitia and wellford from your specimen exam so that should have been my plan of action well speaking of plan of action so you have got you have got 18 days left in your final exam your final exam is on 
27th March. Today is 18th. Your final mock exam with me is on 24th. So 18, 19, 20, 21, maybe 22 as well. And then 23, no, not exactly 22. So this is 22, this is 23. 22, 10 hours on a mock. 23, maybe 8 hours you will speed up on a mock. 24, Whippy's mock. What about these 4 days? What about these 5 days? Prepare at least 10 technical articles, at least 25 questions including the ones we discussed in the Game Changer webinar. Once you are done with the WIPI's mock, you will still have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, followed by 1 to 6. So you have got 6 plus 5, 11 days. And within those 11 days, you can prepare each and every past paper with examiner report, maybe twice each. So you can and you will pass the paper provided you are absolutely crystal clear with respect to everything. Make sure when you attempt the mock exam on 22nd, your course is fully covered. Make sure when you attempt the mock exam on 23rd, your course is fully covered. And obviously you need to attempt the mock exam on 24th with all the honesty and dedication and you will be you will be provided with great details in relation to your script you will you will you will come to know how much you scored in the part a of the question 1 and how much you scored in the part b of the question 1 you will get marks for each and every question your 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 result would be broken down into different questions. And eventually you will have you will come to know how much you scored in, in the context of professional marks. So guys, you are more than welcome. Sir, the what are the additional five questions apart from the question? Well, I will share those five questions probably tonight in the WhatsApp group. I will I need some time for that. Can someone repeat conclusion mark for quality? Was it remedial action? Yes, it depends upon what kind of question are we dealing. So we need to highlight few important quality management issues. Just briefly discuss their significance and briefly recommend few remedial actions. That should be the conclusion paragraph. Okay, Sana with a brilliant question. What time of mock on February 24th? Well, Sana, for that you have to wait for a day or you know probably a day. Within the next 24 hours, WIFI's management and the support team will come up with instructions and the guidelines in relation to the mock exam. So they will tell you each and everything in a day or two. Don't worry. Uh, sir, can you please share the notes which you used to teach from in the lectures? Which I used today? No, 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 which you used in the lectures, recorded lectures. Okay, the, I will share it. Thank you. Any other question from anyone? So guys, thank you very, very much. First of all, I wish you all the best for the VP's mock. I wish that you are going to spend the next, you know, five to six days with, with a lot of discipline. And as a result of that, you will be able to attempt the Vithi's mock. Eventually, I wish you all the best for your final final exam. And I wish you all the good health and happiness for the life beyond it. So thank you very much. You were... Hello. Yes, please. Okay, please. Can you please um, assist us how to do practice questions? For that 26 to 6 that you mentioned. 
I need to use uh, eight hours per day. Uh, and how many questions can we solve that can guarantee enough practice before the day? Please, that's it. I'm really sorry. I tried my level best, but I couldn't catch you up. Is there anyone who, who understood? My who question is, like, how many questions can we solve per day between 25, 23 to to seat of February and March, I mean, that can guarantee. Okay, from twenty. Okay, you want to know the plan once you are done yes. with the VP's mock. Uh, when well, we are done with VP mock. Okay, yes. Yeah, you want to know what should be what should be your goal and plan from twenty yes. fifth of February till sixth of March, right? Exactly. Thank you. You understood my question now. Okay. Okay. Now that's a brilliant question. So from 25th to, I believe, 4th of March, minimum one full pass paper from the ACCA's practice platform. It means three questions per day. But there is a methodology of doing that. One paper per day. Am I asking you to just study for three hours, 15 minutes? No. Step one, you need to attempt a paper, no matter how good or how bad your performance would be. So you are done with three hours, 15 minutes. Then step two, you got to read the entire solution and you got to read the entire examiner report. That would take an, another two, three hours. So assume you are done with six hours. Now what you have to do is, with the help of those suggested answers, again, you have to reproduce the solution. With the help of solution, with the help of solution, with the help of continuous solution, you got to reproduce the answer so that another three hours, maybe you are done with nine hours, now you've got to invest another one or two hours. That's your last step. And you've got to rote learn, memorize those phrases or sentences which would improve your professional language, which would make you more clear, which would make you more confident. So 10 to 11 hours per day, per paper, per day, from 25th to 4th. It's a subjective number, 11 hours. Maybe somebody could pull it off in eight hours. But mind you, there are four steps. Step number one, attempt the paper as a final exam. Read the, read the solution and the examiner report. That's your step two. Reproduce your answers with the help of solution. Step three, fourth, and the final step. Wrote, learn, and memorize the repetitive things. So you can do it till 4th. Once you are done with 4th or 5th March, in the last day or two, do not attempt any new paper. Just keep on, you know, revising the stuff you already know. In the last 2-3 days, you should never read anything new. You should, you should go on and read the stuff you already, you know, you already, you are already done with that and you are very comfortable with that. Am I clear? Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Most welcome. But sir, what about for people who are working? Obviously, you need to cut it down. Maybe, maybe you need to, if not 10, 11 hours, maybe six, seven hours, six hours. But you got to stick to one paper. In pa attempt a paper. Well, I, I, I don't want to reveal the plan B because all of the all of you would jump to plan B. The plan B could be from 25th to 6th. There are 25 minutes. You have got almost 10 days, right? So you could do, you could divide the whole activity of 10 to 11 hours into two days. So it means you have to prepare six papers rather than 12. Archie, how does that sound? 
Varsha and Archie, I do understand both of you are having a busy season. I absolutely agree with it. But five to six, uh, five hours per day, which it means the whole activity is of 10 hours. Okay, you can do it in two days. But you got to make the best use of the holidays, the leaves which you need to get before the paper. And you need to make the best use of the weekend. Okay, I hope it will work for everyone. But those who are full-time students, A, you are a burden, you are a liability, you are an obligation. So once you are done with the AAA exam, please make a CV for yourself. Secondly, guys, I wish you all the best for your final exam. If you have got any other concerns or queries, you are more than welcome to contact me. And uh, well, it's time for me to take your leave. If you are interested in any anything relevant to Wifi, you are more than welcome to contact them. This is the Wifi admission department number. You need to contact them if you want to join the batch for the June attempt or if you want to join the revision batch right now. And thank you very much. You guys were truly active and you guys participated in the chat box. Thank you very much for your active participation. So bye-bye. Thank you very much. I really hope so that I've played some positive role with respect to your exam preparation, especially in the context of risk and in the context of quality management. Stay blessed, spread the love, and take care of your loved ones. And more importantly, you've got to walk a bit of a jogging for 40 minutes. And along with that, at least three cups of coffee per day till your final exam. And if you are going to continue till your final exam, you might continue it further as well. But at least till your exam day, including the exam day. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take care. Your taste buds will not die. Asan, you got to try this. Trust me. The, you know what you have been drinking so far? You know, I'm a huge fan of those Frappuccinos as well. But those are, you know, fancy drinks. Those are not real coffees. Those are for, you know, for, for those are Instagrammable. Those are not the real coffee. Those are not for, you know. Yes, those are. No, no, no. Those are not, mo those are, yeah. Modern problems require modern solutions. <laughs> well, I. The solution which I gave you in the form of black coffee will solve all the problems. Trust me. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a lovely Sunday. I, I'm sure you are going to make the best out of it. Study harder. Bye-bye.